be on Windows, hacking cloud apps on Linux, and .NET. This is kind of weird, because before Linux, .NET, you would not mention it in the same phrase, like, ever. For the buzzy Java developers, and we're going to have a focus on uh, a few uh, Java technologies. My focus will be on .NET Core itself, and Brian Benz, which I'm sure many of you already know, will cover a little bit more on technology we can use that are more related to Java, the kind of ecosystem that you're used to right now. And Linux. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> we're going to have not 30 minutes, but something more like 25. So we're going to have to be a little bit faster. So we're going to do .NET Core intro. And the first thing I want to know is how many of you actually uh, used .NET before in previous life or like previous jobs? All right. Uh, who never used .NET before? OK, we got a few, a few persons. Um, all, all of you working on Java right now? Yes, 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 mostly. All right. So .NET Core is our new iterations. So we're going to be talking a little bit about its open source process. And we're, I'm going to do a little Windows intro. And I'm putting in a quote for a reason you will see. Then Brian's going to cover the other part, what you can use it on. So what's .NET? The most basic .NET framework that everyone knows is pretty much the platform to build everything, the same graphic we've been showing for years, that basically you can run it for your desktop, for your web, for your cloud. You can build it on mobile, with Xamarin, and on gaming with Unities, and whole different scenarios that most of the time they're either uh, Windows focused, or they're going to be uh, more focused on uh, cross piling with something like uh, Mono. So one I want to cover is more what is .NET Core. And .NET Core is basically a rewrite of the same language, the same base platform that we have, except that this time it's, it's for real, and we're actually uh, fully com su uh, supporting Linux, Mac, and other platforms. So at the beginning with .NET Core 2, we focused on the web, and we focused on the cloud to make sure that those were great experiences right off the bat, because this is where most people build their workload in, in the beginning. Then in Core 3, we'll have more support for those platforms. And as we evolve, we're going to get there. And we're going to add more and more and more as we go along. So this is what we have so far. But .NET Core was not just open source on the first day. Uh, it took a long process. Microsoft is a big ship, so it takes a lot of time to move things around. And the initial framework uh, was released around uh, .NET uh, around 2001. So the first initiation of the, uh, of the standard were released in 2001. Then in 2002, we had first 1.0 release. And that was not even open source back then. Then in 2008, SP.NET MVC came in, or first uh, web true web framework, I would say. Um, and this one was open sourced. That was the first foray of Microsoft into uh, providing open source tooling for developers so that they could actually use it. So even though it was open source, it was not a real, true open source that people are expecting that we take in contribution and stuff like that. That was still the early days. And by the time we arrived to, to 2014, we open sourced our compiler. We open sourced uh, all our cross plat tools. And we acquired, um, well, actually, Mono joined us. And we released .NET Core 2. So now, if you go on GitHub, Everything is under slash dot, on slash dot net. You will find our compiler, our framework, all of our libraries, all the source code is all there. And you will be able to do contributions. So we will actually accept contributions. In fact, one of the top contributors on those framework is not even a Microsoft employee. Don't ask me how that happened. So everything happens over there. And we have many GitHub repositories. And if you follow GitHub universe around the world, this is pretty much where things is happening. Uh, we have tons of PR, and they're not just closed for everyone. You can actually use them. So real fast, if there's one slide you need to know, is that's a good summary. It runs pretty much everywhere. I have had .NET Core run a Raspberry Pi within a Docker container. 
that also is another discussion for another talk. Um, it's also crazy fast. It's in, in fact, it's in the top 10 of frameworks on tech and power. Apparently, if you think of speed as a feature, apparently you become faster. And it also runs on micro containers. So I'll do something unthinkable from the 2005 days, which is using .NET without Visual Studio. Anybody loves Visual Studio? Yeah. Ah, cool. Anybody loves Visual Studio to just edit a few files and close it down after? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a great development experience, except that, yeah, when it's not. So I already installed .NET Framework, and the first thing we want to see is command line. Who are fans of command lines? Pretty much everyone in the room. So before talking to a Microsoft developer, saying that you love command line would have been heresy. So I want to show you how quick it is to actually create a project. So let's just say I want to create a console app. Uh, I'm going to call it two because why not? Nope, this one already exists, and I want the other one. What? All right, console app two. All right, and I want to use a new, .NET new console. And that's it. The project's already created, but it's already restoring the project, and I can already .NET build it. Anybody before .NET used to install Visual Studio on a build server to compile your project? Yeah, not, not happening anymore. Don't need to do that. That's like, that was a crazy idea from before. So now, if I want to run that, I can just do .NET run, and I will have my Hello World project, hello. And of course, you want to edit the code, you don't want to stay in the command line. So I will be using code as an editor, and the difference with this one is, well, first, you don't feel like the grandma in Titanic. Well, it's been 84 years since the last time. You actually have your code open right away. And Can I just add one thing? How many people here have used Visual Studio Code? Okay, quite a few, so we don't need to tell you what it is. All yeah, right, cool. so it's pretty cool. It's free, open source, yes. Yeah, and well. I'll show you some cool stuff in a bit, too. Here's the thing that uh, when you're doing presentation that I'm really bad at is changing your color scheme. So control P, uh, and you look for team, top, and you just, well, let's go light visual studio, because why not? So that I can blind everyone in the room. And can I, I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. So the whole editor here is, uh, is collapsible. You have IntelliSense, you have everything else. I don't need to sell you on, on the features. But basically, we only sell you two projects. Two, uh, we only create two files, because that's the only thing we need. So, have anybody loves CS Project files? You know, you open one, and it looks like, I don't know, your stuff basement that you need to clean up, but you like, push back to later. All right, so we did a little bit of changes on that side, too. Like, as you can see right now, it's pretty lean. We cut out pretty much everything and only kept what was necessary. So if I want to do something here, uh, I can actually recompile the whole project, and we do support, like, a little spring one. You can, I, I can actually compile from the project right here. And as you can see, well, there's no configuration task. Well, let's create one and say I, I build .NET Core. We do support Maven and other things in there, too. So once I have this run, F5 again, and... Ah, uh, you know what? To hell with that. Come in line. <laughs> then it run. And I will have spring one. So this is just a basic one. So you, you will be able to create MVC and any other kind of other application here. Um, we do support other, other template. And one of the things I want to show you is uh, a web project that I have running. So I have, like, so not much time. All right. I want to just do one last thing then. Docker run. Dash IT dashboard 5000 and uh, let's go 80 and web app one all pine because I'm a crazy man. All right, let's do this. Control one. Let's do uh, at the top here localhost 5000. And I have a .NET Core application running on top of Linux, and not just any Linux, I'm running on top of Alpine. So in fact, this image with everything out of the box, with including all the libraries and all, the whole .NET framework, plus my application, is about 160 meg. 
So this is what I got. Uh, uh, <laughs> ben, it's, it's your turn, Brian. Because uh, Mr. Ben, because otherwise I'm going to steal too much of your time. No problem. Hi. Um, yeah, so I am going to really quickly go through some materials here. I think from the show of hands I had earlier, you guys have seen a lot of this stuff. How many people here use shell.azure.com before? Okay, just one. Okay, good, good, good. I'm going to teach you something that you might have not. No, let me, let me log in here. Where's there we go, your, yay. Where's your board? Right there. That's the one, right? That's oh, the no. One okay. Oh, I thought that was a USB-C. Great. We need another delay. Uh, just be a second, guys. No big deal. Sorry. It's um, the one thing I do want to show you real quick, and I'm, I'm not going to go through my slides. You guys can have a look at those after. Uh, but hi. Oh, let me take off my laptop from here. It's going to help you out. Yeah, let me go. There you go. Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. Okay. <sighs> Let's see, you got that? Yes, good, all right. Let's run this from here. Okay, good, and we're gonna duplicate because I need this, all right. So um, we'll, we'll, that's a little preview, but uh, let's just start with this. I'm gonna go through a couple quick demos. Um, the one thing I do wanna show you that's, I think, very cool is if I go into, first of all, how, how many people have used the Azure portal before? Okay, so the demos I wanna show you today are basically in the title of our presentation, running .NET Core on Linux. Um, but before I get to that, there's one little tool you guys need to know about because Max really highlighted the uh, uh, Azure CLI. This is really cool. So shell.azure.com, if you guys don't know about it, uh, the way you've probably worked with uh, Visual Studio Code, you have that little command back tick uh, to actually open the window to work with a uh, console. We actually have shell.azure.com as well, which for some reason is not loading. Leave. Um, and what that does, hopefully, sometime today, Oh, no. Well, I think you can hide it in the portal, too. Like, yeah, the top right yeah, there. yeah, 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 don't uh, watch it. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, we're having trouble reaching the server. Great. Okay, it looks like it's working now. I'm going to try this one more time. Leave. Oh, no. So one of the many issues when you have uh, running uh, Azure is that you're trying to install all of, all of your tools on your machine. Yeah. And at some point you're like, all right, which dependencies are my tools up to date? And I need to keep that updated and I'm trying to stay up to date. And with every cloud provider, we update our tools on a crazy basis. And then we make sure that there's always new, uh, there's new products, there's new updates, there's new packages. And <laughs> the thing that we do oh, is, no. oh, yeah. funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, so, now I'm having on a So one of the things that we do that Brian is going to showcase is basically we have shell.azure.com that allows you to automatically get uh, an SSH into a container that will allow you to run an Azure CLI. Everything's already pre-configured for you, so you can actually create uh, VM resources, clusters, whatever you want from the Azure portal, but that is not all. The shell is available actually in our docs, so you can actually go in the docs and actually run this. And if you download the Azure app on your phone, you can actually like spawn a Kubernetes cluster from your phone. It's not a single command, you actually have to type it in, uh, but you can actually use CLI directly from your phone, which is very crazy. Anyway, I'm gonna skip that one. All right. uh, I'm gonna move on to the next demo, which is basically what I talked about, Linux. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, fire up um, a couple of different things. I, I actually did this in advance to save time. Uh, I created a VM. So I create, how many people have worked with Azure and created a VM in Azure? A few of you, okay. Have you used this, how many people use a CLI to do that? Okay, nobody. So there is an Azure CLI you can download. I was gonna show it in the shell. It was gonna be really cool, but anyway, let's skip that. Uh, first thing I did here is I created a uh, resource group with the Azure CLI. And then I go in and I create a VM. 
And this VM is actually going to have uh, uh, admin ID and password. Uh, it's a Linux, it's the latest Ubuntu Linux, uh, and it says admin ID. Uh, and next thing we do is we open up some ports uh, using AZ VM open port. So uh, 5,000 and 8,000 when you work with the .NET, they like those even numbers versus 8080 for the rest of the uh, spring world. Uh, and then we just go SSH. God, I hope this works. Uh, <laughs> I go SSH in my command window here. So by the way, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, we're creating a whole bunch of Linux commands all the time. And um, let's see. This is SSH in the command window, in case you didn't notice. I'm not using putty. Uh, oh, okay. Are you using ABC123? Uh, I am not. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. Okay, hold on. I am going to do something here. Copy, paste, I'm password. Killing, yeah, I'm killing this VM afterwards anyway, so you guys can see it. We're all friends here. That's the password. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm typing, but let's do it again. And by the way, I have a really, really, it's misspelt, so uh, I have a really, really good security there. Um, anyway, there we go. We're actually SSHing from a DOS command window into a Linux VM. And the next thing I did here, uh, I actually got in there already, and uh, I opened the ports, I SSH'd in, and then I checked the release, because there's different rules you need for releasing, for different releases when you're downloading .NET Core. Uh, and what I do then is I go to this link, open it up, and it tells you about how you're actually going to install .NET. Um, uh, you download .NET here. Uh, there's instructions on setting that up, and I'm gonna flip over that. I'll send these links out. Uh, and then the, uh, the next thing you do is a w, uh, wget to actually uh, load some Debian packages for you. Uh, after that, uh, sudo apt-get update, uh, and then uh, I did a test, a test app to build my own app, and this is running on Linux, so if I just go, um, let's see, cd test app, see test app, see my app, and then uh, .NET run, and it actually just runs .NET on my machine. So I already preloaded all this stuff. Uh, it says hello world, so we know it's working. Sorry for the small yeah. screen here, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually working. And the next thing I did, is, and I'm just breezing through this really quick, guys. Um, Max actually created some Docker files with some Docker examples for me. Uh, and I went out to Hub uh, and I got those. The, I actually got the Docker.com uh, .NET samples. Uh, I pulled them in using uh, Docker pull. I actually loaded Docker on here as well. Uh, and then I just do a Docker run and I can do a Docker run here. And it gives me a nice little logo just to tell me that .NET is actually running on my Linux machine. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me, now, that, now that I've got that going, let me, uh, I'm just brimming with confidence now. Let me fire up this uh, Azure Cloud Shell and see if this actually works now. No, nope, it's still not going to work. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, try on Chrome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I have authentication things that I've got set up here. But those are the two demos I wanted to show you. Uh, this one's not going to work. Okay, let me tell you what I was going to show you. The shell that Azure.com is an Azure CLI, just like you guys are used to, command prompt. But if you type code, it actually fires up a basic instance of Visual Studio code inside the shell. So you don't need to download anything. You can go to the, the, the dodgy computer in the hotel lobby, and you can log in if you're so, uh, so inclined using yeah. your password, and you can actually fire up the CLI, work with Azure, uh, and you can fire up Visual Studio Code from there as well and play with so, that. And you've got five gigs of storage you can use for that as well. 
There's an iPhone app that does the same thing. It actually, iPhone and Android apps that allow you to do that as well. And I use those on my vacation because I didn't take my laptop and there was something I needed to do. Are you working so, on vacation? I, well, I wasn't working, but I had to. <laughs> security. Security calls me and tells me that some of my Linux VMs need to be fixed immediately because they have problems. So anyway, um, uh, the other thing I want to tell you about, how many people are familiar with Steel Toe? Okay, so some of you are familiar. It's a, uh, it's integrated with Cloud Foundry. It's a .NET runtime that runs on top of Cloud Foundry. So theoretically, you could take any of your .NET code that you have already, put it on a um, cloud native application platform like Cloud Foundry that has circuit breakers using um, Hystrix. It has service discovery uh, with Eureka and a few other features that are really, really useful for running your apps. So you don't have to do what I did and just run it in a single VM. You can actually do some scalable things with uh, Steeltoe if you get that going. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about is we do have Azure DevOps services, free private Git repos. If anybody's interested in that, uh, free private Git repos. Um, you can actually get those from uh, Azure DevOps. Just search Azure DevOps. Uh, we also have pipelines. They integrate with Jenkins. We do a ton of work with Jenkins. They actually, Jenkins builds Jenkins on Azure. How many people use Jenkins here for deploying things? Not too many. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's actually uh, really, really built into what we do. Uh, and we have App Insights for Java, which is a way of handling telemetry. Do you want to go through? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go real quick because we have one minute left. So we have, uh, we covered lightweight container scenarios. So something like Alpine, we run right out, out, right out the box. We support Red Hat, we support Ubuntu, we support uh, CentOS, and we support a few other uh, re, um, distros that I don't remember. Can I have the slides back? No. <laughs> uh, Sorry. No problems. I, want, I just wanted to try that yeah, no problem. one more time. So, and we also have done in core benchmarks. If you're interested, you can go to Tech Empower. Uh, it will actually have all this, the information there. Uh, the, the data is actually pretty convincing. It's amazing. If you want to talk to me about it, I'm going to be happy to show you the data. I also have done a core running on top of a Raspberry Pi within Docker containers. Don't ask me about this one because this is just crazy cuckoo stuff. If you want to try .NET itself, just C Sharp because I don't know, you're, you don't know C Sharp. You can go on try.net. Dad, don't mention it. And of course, for resources, if you want to do uh, the try.net, you can just use those short links so it's easier. So all the links and the installation for each uh, distribution, this is not hidden in a wiki deep, 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 deep down into GitHub. This is directly on our documentation. You can get it there. And if you want to learn how to create VM and cloud resources, I created a link for you right there so that you can do exactly what Brian did today. And we're right on time. Yay. Damn. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs>